Well done, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you again next month. All right. Good job. I like that better than you have. All right. That was really I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of its members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551. The time is 6 a.m. P.M. P.M. 6 p.m. <laughs> he was checking if you were awake. Yeah. Oh, we Thank you, Mr. Yeah. President. All right. Um, invocation and uh, Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Uh, Scott Moore, Trustee Moore. Uh, if you are so inclined, would you please bow with me? God of all people in all places at all times, we pray that your spirit would dwell amongst us tonight. We celebrate the diversity with which you created humanity. We celebrate the diversity amongst ourselves, and we celebrate the diversity with which you have revealed yourself to us throughout the ages. But even as we celebrate that diversity, may we also find unity. The 18th century theologian John Wesley was quoted as saying, though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike. May we be of one heart, though we are not of one opinion. Almighty God, let that be our prayer tonight. If we cannot be of one opinion, may you make us be of one heart, one spirit. May that spirit be the growth and the safety and the health and the well-being of every child for whom you have called us to serve. The benefit of every employee whom you have entrusted us to care. And the resources of every citizen of which you have called us to steward. We lift these prayers to you each in our own hearts and in our own ways. Amen. Amen. The presentation of our colors tonight will be by the College Park Marine Corps Junior uh, ROTC <laughs> unit. We have a very special oh. honor for them being with us tonight. They just returned oh, about midnight last <coughs> night from national competition where they oh. placed fourth. Uh, uh, and in keeping with uh, the motto of the uh, Marine Corps, Semper uh, Fidelis, they stood faithful to their duty and joined us tonight. Oh. We have 2nd Lieutenant Devin Clifton, Staff Sergeant Ryan Desjardins, 1st Sergeant Clayton Stewart, Staff Sergeant Nicholas Watson, led by Major Cody Stewart, and Sergeant Major Chris Combs. Our pledges tonight will be led by the Best Buddies program from Knox Junior High and College Park High School. Would you please stand for the pledge and join me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pledge to the Texas flag. Please join me. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Outstanding job, young, young men. All right, for item 2A, special recognition, awards and recognition, special recognition, students together achieving results, STAR Award program. At this um, time, we'll ask our assistant superintendent of secondary education, Mr. Greg Colshan, come forward. President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Knoll, graduating seniors are being recognized tonight for their participation and commitment to the Student Together Achieving Results, or STAR program. This is the 10th group of students to graduate. We want to honor them for their hard work and persistence. 
High school counselors are asked to identify ninth grade students who struggled during their freshman year and invite them to participate in this program. STAR is focused on building strong relationships between counselors and STAR students. As part of the program, the students are exposed to opportunities where they learn about themselves and how to plan their future. The program has grown from a summer program to a year-round program. They hold monthly meetings as well as visit to community colleges, technical schools, and four-year colleges. Students also have visited job sites, done community service, and heard motivational speakers. Tonight, we're honored to have three of the participants here to share their experiences with you. First, I'd like to call on Cameron Robbins from the Woodlands High School. How y'all doing? Good. 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 All righty. As y'all know, my name is Cameron Robbins. Uh, I go to the Woodlands High School. Uh, I started off my junior year, which was like a very rough time for me. And for most of the people behind me, we've all had that time where, you know, we all felt it was hard for us to figure out what we wanted to do in life and to move forward onward to college and all that, all those things. Um, I wanted to talk about one of the things that really helped me out was basically getting what I needed together so I can take that next step into figuring out what I wanted to do because at the time I was I was la like I was slacking off, which was really bad, and uh, it really pushed me. Uh, one of the things I learned from the program was to not feel discouraged and feel like there's no option, there's no possibility for me. Just because, like, let's say my grades were low at that time, it like I said it was a stressful time. I wasn't from the Woodlands as well. I came from Dallas, and it's a very competitive school, uh, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, and another thing is the college visits. And before that, I really didn't go into any college visits because I felt like there wasn't really anything for me or I just couldn't figure it out myself. But through the SCAR program, it really pushed me to figure out what I wanted to do. And that's what I would like to say. Good job. Thank you. From Caney Creek High School, we'll hear from Brittany Spaulding. Hello. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany Spaulding, and I'm a senior from Candy Creek High School. I've been in the STAR program for all four years of high school. This program has taught me that there are way more job opportunities after high school than I ever dreamed, and that there are many different colleges and universities in addition to the closest one to my hometown. I have learned on our recent, most recent trip to the Herman Memorial Cole Medical Center that to become a radiation tech, a career I'm interested in pursuing, takes 10 or more years of education and training. However, I have also learned that you can start from just being in the building branch of the hospital into later on becoming a nursing assistant or anything else you want if you continue your education, work hard, and reach towards your personal goal. I've also learned my junior year when we went to the Carl Country Club, the hospitality is a wide field with lots of jobs and I discovered that we have hospitality program in the creek that I never knew about until that day. On one exciting trip, I got to try my hand at flight simulation at the Conroe Regional Flying Tigers Flight School, something I never would have been able to do without this program. STAR has shown me that life can be a little easier later on after high school if you just choose the path you want to take and you never step off that path. I have learned that um, anything is truly possible and you can make it in life with <coughs> enough determination, grit, perseverance, and education. Good job. Thank you. And finally, we'll hear from Christian Talford from the Woodlands College Park High School. Hello, my name is. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Christian Talford. I am a senior at College Park High School. I have been in the STAR program all four years of my high school career. However, ah, sorry. However, the beginning of my senior year, I have suffered an injury and football caused me to break my left arm, leading to a major surgery. It ended my high school football career. I was in the state of mind to just give up on college and sports. Remaining in the STAR program restored my hope and dreams of going to college. The program gave me 
helped me realize the options and opportunities I have after high school. I especially enjoy missing class. <laughs> <laughs> We have to revisit that part. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have applied to the University of North Texas where I will be majoring in psychology and minoring in philosophy. My goal is to become a doctor specializing in psychotherapy. I would like to thank my counselors for allowing me to be a part of this amazing program. I would also like to thank the school board for creating this program to help teenagers like me succeed in life. I'd also like to thank my family for the support and love. Thank you all for a wonderful four years in this program. Laura Willard, our College Readiness Specialist and District Star Coordinator, will introduce counselors who work with these very special students. We don't miss that much school. <laughs> The STAR counselors have stayed with these students for four years, they're family. And because they're family, and at this time when we begin to say goodbye, they wanted to be the ones to introduce them to you tonight. From Kenny Creek High School, Cindy Orozco and Jan strothberg Lindbergh are here to honor their seniors. Hi, good evening. Jewel Danley. Marlon Meza. <laughs> Brittany Spaulding. Brittany Spaulding. Next are our Conroe High Star Counselors, Tiffany Holm and Kenneth Williams. Hannah Iiba. <laughs> Sedaria Johnson. Asia Jones. <laughs> DeAndre Lewis. Janicia Penrice. <laughs> Jada Weir. Next is Connie Huglin from Hawk Alternative School. John Hardy. Frankie Wood. From Oak Ridge High School, Sean Matlock will now honor her students. <laughs> Hannah Hayes. 
Hannah Beal. Brittany Munoz. Deanne Petty. Aniston Sellers. Next are the star counselors from the Woodland College Park, DeLorean Hogan and Tammy Morrow. Thank you for having us today, uh, CISD board. Janaya Houston. <laughs> Tanisha Mosby. <laughs> and Christian Telford. from the Woodlands High School, Star Counselor Tracy Turner. Ian Alvarez Ward. <laughs> Susanna Castillo. <laughs> Robin Finley. Courtney Metz. <laughs> and Cameron Robbins. Thank you all again. Congratulations, seniors. Well done. stuff here man that's awesome all right good all right let's go to um, item 2b special recognition energy solutions 2018 
Outstanding RMS Partner for Excellence in Energy and Resource Management Award. All right. Dr. No. Our Assistant Superintendent for Operations, Mr. Jim Caker. All right. Thank you, Dr. Nall. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Nall. Thank you for this opportunity to give special district recognition to our energy partners. Let me begin by acknowledging the staff members responsible for managing and supporting our partnership with energy partners. Mr. Marshall Schroeder, Director of Maintenance and Custodial, Mr. Dwight Martin, Assistant Director, and Mr. Roger Garvey, our Energy Manager. Thank you for all you do to support this work and our partnership. <laughs> With us tonight from Energy is Mark Delavan, Program Manager, Energy Solutions at Energy Texas, and from Centerpoint Energy is Mark Fowler, Clear Results, Centerpoint Score Program. I would like to welcome both of them to the podium at this time to speak about the benefits of our partnership and the savings achieved through these programs. Gentlemen, if you would please come forward. All righty. Well, thank you, Jim. My name is Mark Delavan. I work with Energy Texas, and I manage our energy efficiency program. So first off, thank you school board for allowing me to be here. So at Energy Texas, we care deeply about the customers that we serve. And we understand the importance of putting as many dollars back into the classroom as possible. And at Energy, we don't make it our business just to serve you electricity, but we make it our business to be members and pillars in your community. So one of the things we've done to help become members of your community is we've actually instituted energy efficient programs to help our customers use less of the services that we provide. So on the non-residential side, we created a program called Commercial Solutions. In this program, we actually help you install more energy efficient by paying you incentives for completing these projects. And by making these projects more affordable, you can start reducing under your bill and investing more capital back into your schools. So Energy Texas is pleased to recognize Connor ISD for the outstanding work that you guys did in 2017 and 2018. So starting off in 2017, Connor ISD was a leading member of a program that we have called Resource Management Services, or RMS for short. This program helps Conroe ISD <clears throat> equip and make systematic changes on behavior with staff, students, and teachers to create behavior changes to help you reduce power. And you guys did such an outstanding job in 2017 that Entergy Texas awarded you a bonus check of $7,500. Now in September, <laughs> In September of 2018, Conroe ISD ended up finishing our RMS program. It is a three-year commitment, and you guys ended up running the program from March 2015 to September 2018. Now, over this three-year period, Conroe ISD was able to save over 11.6 million kilowatt hours and 2,865 kilowatts. Now, those are very nice numbers, but what does that mean in dollars? So if you convert that to utility costs, that's a savings of over $1 million in three years. Now the great thing about energy efficient is it's, it's a two combo punch. Not only are you saving on your bill, but you're helping the environment at the same time. So the carbon offsets that Conroe ISD was able to achieve in this program is equal to reducing 1,753 cars off the road and consuming 200, oh, sorry, 929,000 gallons of gasoline. So good job. Connor ISD. Now, Connor ISD also participated in our normal program and did a number of energy efficient projects throughout the district. In 2018, the Natatorium received new LED lights and a new air cooled chiller. Also, at Moorhead Junior High, you received a new air cooled chiller with um, some incentive, and you were able to earn some incentive dollars through these, this program. So through doing these different retrofits, Conroe ISD earned over $37,000 incentives, saved 133 kilowatt, kilowatts, and saved over 827,000 kilowatt hours. So that's equal to about $74,000 in utility savings. So we're very pleased to have this amazing partnership that we've had with Conroe ISD. You guys have participated consistently since 2008 to present day without missing a single year. So you guys are not only great partners, but you're also pillars in the community pushing energy efficient force throughout other school districts. 
So congratulations, Connor ISD. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Mark Fowler, who's working for the Center Point program. My name is Mark Fowler, and I'm here to represent Center Point Energy SCORE program. The Center Point SCORE program provides local government, schools, and higher education participants with vendor neutral guidance to help complete projects that will reduce peak electric demand and save annual uh, energy consumption. The program pays cash incentives for the estimated energy savings from each project. First, let me say I echo much of uh, Mr. Delavan's comments. Con Conroe ISD is an exemplary partner when it comes to promoting energy efficiency across the district. The team of professionals we work with expertly facilitate program requirements and inf information requests with a strong sense of personal ownership. As evidence, I'm pleased to announce that in 2018, Conroe ISD earned over $92,000 in uh, program incentives for the installation of high efficiency air conditioning uh, and lighting equipment at the new Grand Oaks High and KJ Clark Intermediate Schools. Com combined, these projects will save over 211 kilowatts of peak electricity demand and over 395,000 kilowatt hours of electricity consumption annually. This is equivalent to uh, this is, this is the equivalent of removing over 300 tons of carbon dioxide from the air or the CO2 produced to, to power 50 uh, residential homes in an year. Centerpoint would like to expend, extend special thanks to, the, to Conroe ISD program partners, the, ISD, uh, the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees, and uh, the school district for action in the 2018 program. Thank you. Thank you. I like the way you think, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you. All right. Like that combo. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else with big checks? Get Bill next. We're taking checks. Front of the line. You get to go front of the line. Pump you up. All right. Item 2C, special recognition, 2019 UIL 6A girls, 200-yard freestyle state championship. Champion, uh, Lily Nord Nordham. Uh, the Woodlands High School, Dr. No. Yeah, so actually we're going to um, bring forward Dr. Ted Landry. He's going to introduce um, our coach, and, and he will therefore introduce our athletes for the next four items. Okay. Uh, a lot to celebrate tonight, the Woodlands High School swim team. So, Dr. Landry. Yes, good evening. Uh, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. No, thank you very much for this opportunity to come before you tonight uh, to recognize some truly remarkable students. Um, anyone who knows anything about youth or high school swimming, uh, knows the amount of time, effort, drive, passion, and work ethic it, it takes to be successful at this level. Uh, the students you're going to meet tonight have all of those things uh, in spades. They really are a great group. Uh, the Woodlands High School couldn't be more proud of their accomplishments. Um, you know, they are in the water uh, every day, multiple times a day, and, uh, and never complain. Uh, they do what they do because they love it and they are very good at it. So it is my great privilege uh, to be able to introduce uh, their head coach, the Woodlands High School uh, head swimming and diving coach, and he will introduce you to them, uh, Coach Jeremy Wade. I'm not too sure about the complaining part. I think there may be a little bit that goes into that. But yes, thank you very much for having us here. Uh, very well deserved. A lot of hardworking kids 
You know, a successful uh, season has many moving parts, and one of those is uh, our parents. So if you're a parent here in support of one of your swimmers, please give a wave or a, or a stand up, please. You know, that's a huge part. Um, just the, the drive that these kids have stems from their parents and their, their full support. And they're a great ac uh, asset to, to our program because uh, they're helping me behind the scenes do, do a lot of things uh, within the program. You know, we have 100 team members, and, and they are a tremendous uh, asset for us. Uh, second is we have some uh, great assistant coaches. Uh, coach Kevin Witt is our diving coach, uh, aquatics director. Uh, a big, big reason our guys were so successful this year was we had some great boy divers, and he was a big, played a big role in that. And also, uh, Coach Katie Tom is our assistant swim coach. She does an outstanding job with, with everything behind the scenes, helping the kids get to where they're supposed to be and making sure they're in line back there and, and ready to come up here. Uh, she does many, many things behind the scenes for us. Um, third is great administration and support staff. Our uh, athletic secretary, Ms. Roach, she does a ton of things behind the scenes, helping us get ready to travel, and the list goes on and on. Um, our campus coordinators, our, our district athletic director, all play a, a big role in, in our success. And obviously, Dr. Landry and, and his support. You know, he asked me, or he said, I hear it's a tradition that the principal has to jump in if you guys win. And I was like, absolutely, yeah. It's in yeah. your contract. I actually yeah. did say that. But, but he brought it back. He was on deck, ready to jump in. We didn't get him in the pool this year. We didn't win the team title this year. But we're going to get him in here in about another 10 months. That pool is very cold, and I know he's looking forward to it. Um, talk a little bit about this year. We broke two school records. Both boys and girls were district and regional champions, and both were state runner-up to South Lake Carroll this year. Um, first, I'm going to recognize our individual state champion on the girls' side, Junior Lily Nordman. Come on up. You know, Lily had an incredible season. She was female district and regional swimmer of the meet. Uh, she defended her sister's state title in the 200 freestyle in that 200 free this year. She was also state runner-up in the 100 Butterfly, setting a new school record in that, and she is a multi-event All-American. Wow. Next, I'm going to recognize our girls' uh, 200 medley relay. They are back-to-back -back state champions in this event. Um, on the backstroke leg, it was Sydney Roycraft. She is a junior. On the breaststroke leg and prelims, we have senior Karsten Fields, who will be swimming for SMU next year. <laughs> swimming the breaststroke leg in finals was sophomore Alyssa Sorensen. And our state champion tuner freestyler, Lily Nordman, was a part of that relay doing butterfly in that medley relay. <laughs> and then our anchor leg swimming freestyle was junior Valerie Ann Staffelt. You know, the girls' tuner medley is the very first race of the meet, uh, so it kind of set the tone for us. Uh, it was actually a come-from-behind victory. We were almost a full body length behind going in the last leg, and, and Valerian had a, an incredible anchor leg to bring it back for us, and it was a super exciting relay, and that relay is also All-American. Congratulations. 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 Congratul
Yeah. I think I could take you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Congratulations. Very happy for you. Congratulations. Top girls. Okay, moving on to our boys. Um, individual state champion is a sophomore, Tyler Hewlett. Like Lil, like uh, Lily, he had an incredible season. He was a he was the male district swimmer of the meet. He was state champion in the hundred backstroke. He placed sixth in the hundred fly, and he is also a multi event all American. <laughs> Moving on to our state championship boys four hundred freestyle relay. Uh, first, the the person that led the relay off for us. He is a senior. Uh, Tobin Hickman Chow. He couldn't be with us here tonight. He's actually at Yale. He is committed to, to swim there, so he is visiting New Haven, uh, and that's the reason he can't be here tonight. And we had a sophomore swim the second leg for us in prelims. He had a ton of homework. He could not be here tonight, but his name is Cotton Fields. And then our second leg in finals for that relay was junior Luke Joris. Tyler Hewlett, obviously a part of that state champion relay. He was the third leg. And then our anchor leg was junior Matthew Tannenberger. That relay was also very, very exciting. We were down going into the last leg, and then Matthew anchored to, to pull that relay out for us. South Lake Carroll had won that relay numerous years in a, in a, in a row. And then uh, we also set a new school record in that uh, relay, and it is also All-American honors. You know, with, uh, with, with two school records set this year, I thought it was an incredible accomplishment. All, all of the awesome swimmers and divers that have come through the Woodlands, uh, to be able to still set records, I think was a huge accomplishment for, for these guys to do that in that foreign free relay. And many of these uh, student athletes are going to get academic all-state honors and academic all-American honors. That list won't be published until early summer, but I didn't want that to go unnoticed. These are truly some of the finest student athletes in Conroe ISD. Let's give them a hand. All right, so you can you can stop applauding for a second. If I could get the girls to come back up here one more yeah, time, real quick. Absolutely, <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Uh, on behalf of the board, we obviously want to say congratulations and thank you so much for representing our school district in such a great way. It, it's not easy to get to the level that you guys are at, and, and I don't know if sometimes we, we take that for granted, but for the parents, they obviously know, they understand the work and dedication that it takes on their part and the work and dedication it takes on yours. Some people are, are blessed with a, with a talent and don't realize it and don't work on it. And some people just work really hard. And I don't know which one of that you are, because I've seen meeting you guys for the first time. But either way, you put the effort in, you put the work in, you have dedication, you also had leadership, you had leaders ahead of you that you followed, and now you guys get to be leaders for the crop of, of students that are coming behind you. So don't ever forget that. Thank you for what you do. I appreciate you, the coaches, the staff, everybody uh, from top to bottom. Thank you for representing our school district. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 I think I can just reach it. I don't want to shake our hand. Congratulations. 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 Really happy for you.
All right, Dr. No. Um, like what? What's that? <laughs> Special recognition, item G. Willis, the Willis College Park High School, Dr. No. All right, Dr. Merle. This will begin uh, our College Park celebration for tonight. Right. Good evening, Mr. Williams, Board of Trustees, Dr. No. It is a great honor and privilege to be here tonight to recognize College Park's uh, state wrestling champion. Uh, one thing uh, I'll say about her, and I'm only going to say a few things, that, but her heart and dedication is going to uh, be seen as our coach talks about her. But one thing you have to be careful of in the hallways of College Park is just she walks down and she may run over you while she's reading her book. <laughs> so uh, she's an incredible young lady. But also a little bit on our coach, he is also a Conroe ISD graduate and three-time state champion himself and we are fortunate to bring our coach uh, back to CISD and especially to College Park High School. So at this time I'd like to uh, recognize and bring forward our coach, uh, Coach Eric Spute. Well, I want to thank you guys for having us to be here today and um, recognize Hunter's accomplishments and um, She's been such a big part of our program success. Uh, all four years that I've been at College Park, um, she really and truly has bought into everything it takes to be successful. Uh, she's been such a great leader to our, to our program, to the guys and girls in our program. Uh, and it's truly shown in, in, in her wrestling. And uh, some of the things she accomplished throughout her high school career, she was uh, a four-time state medalist. She was second in freshman year, third in her junior year, or sorry, sophomore year, third in her junior year. Uh, her senior year became our program's first ever state champion. Um, she was also a four-time All-American. Her third four years, which means she placed top eight in the uh, national tournament or I thought it was in high school. Um, and probably one of the things I'm most proud of is just watching who she's become and who she's run into. Uh, we talk a lot of, uh, in our program about the importance of not only working a day off in the practice room or winning every, winning every race or, or working hard in the, in the weight room, but um, the importance of keeping the girls up and doing a little in the classroom. Um, the decisions you make with nutrition and what you put in your bodies, who you hang out with, how you treat people and just becoming a good person. And she's all that and more and I have no doubt in my mind she's going to leave College Park and be successful in whatever she decides to do. Um, and really influence, and positively influence a lot of people along the way. Um, and I just want to leave here and I can speak for her as well and just tell you guys how grateful I am to be part of such a great school in College Park uh, and such a great school district. Uh, that allows us and puts us in a position to be successful as athletes and coaches and teachers. Um, and like Dr. Merle said, I, I was fortunate enough to graduate at Conrad ISD and they're going to really come back and work here. Um, and I grow and learn each and every day. So just thank you guys. That's the most important part. And, and this is Heather Robinson, our wrestling state champion. Hunter, on, uh, on behalf of the board, we just want to say how proud we are of you. I've heard a lot of just wonderful things about you. You know, we've talked tonight about drive and passion and work ethic, and it's just, it's inspiring that not only do you do that in your events, but also in the classroom and also in your leadership and your mentoring the younger. So we know we, you have an incredible future ahead of you and use that drive and passion and work ethic. You've just got incredible things ahead of you in on behalf of the board, we want to present you with this board, this recognition, and uh, just congratulations. You make us very proud. Appreciate you very much. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, item uh, H, special recognition, the Woodlands College Park High School. Well, we are excited to continue the College Park celebration tonight. And um, I think as we all felt as we entered the, the building today, the number of kids out um, 
showing off their projects. Um, the buglers, that might have to become a thing every month. Maybe we just need to start <laughs> with meeting nice. with that. Um, and also the JROTC, we've already seen so much of what great makes College Park a great place, but we're in for a treat to see more at this time. So we're going to start off with our video, and then we'll turn it over to uh, our College Park students and staff. So, Dr. No, this is full feeder, right? It's the full feeder. All right, good deal. Full feeder. I'll see everybody. Okay. I am Caroline, student body president of College Park High School. My friends and I would like to take you on an adventure through the College Park family. We hope you see the connection that we all have and the passion we share in supporting and learning from each other. I'm Garrett, and this is my buddy Keaton. Our engagement with each other is vital in the success of our family. We make many strides in understanding differences and highlighting the good in all. Just like Garrett, we all look forward to being each other and learning as well as having fun. Come on, let's take a walk through the College Park Theater. My name is Daryl. The Academy of Science and Technology is all about the future. Through science fair, robotics, and destination imagination, we are prepared for the future, whether it is here on Earth or maybe even Mars. We are proud to solve and investigate the future in math, science, and technology. I am Breck. And I am Carson. We believe that students with intellectual disabilities bring out the best in all of us. This place allows us to create an atmosphere of acceptance. We are We're proud, proud to, to be a buddy. Hi, I'm Henry. The Seniors Ops Walk inspires us to work hard and be dedicated to our academics so that we too will walk the halls of our former schools and inspire others. We are proud to be part of the Seniors Last Walk. Hi, I'm Suri. Read for a Better Life is always an exciting time to see our family from College Park come over and celebrate learning through reading. We also love the drumline. We are proud to read for a better life. Hi, I'm Emma. The David Dream Run encourages kids to help kids. It teaches us to dream big and learn from our past. We are proud to investigate the past so that we have a bright future. Hi, I'm Aiden. The NEAT program encourages us to never ever be absent or tardy. Being NEAT enables us to learn more and be more successful. We also love the NEAT pep rally at College Park. We are proud to be NEAT at school. I am Gianna. The Homecoming Red Wagon Parade and the pep rally bring the entire community together. We celebrate each other and the great things all of us do. We are proud to show our spirit for each other and our community. I'm Lily. Through programs like Girls on the Run, we develop self-worth, confidence, and goal-driven decisions to obtain an objective. This helps us understand commitment, pride, and success. We are proud to be driven. I'm Will. And I'm Molly. Being involved in activities like the musical are always fun and a great learning experience. We all love to be part of something bigger than ourselves and working as a team. We are proud to be involved. We hope that you enjoyed seeing our family and the importance of each member. Our focus on the development of every person, teachers, parents, and students allows us to be successful and College Park family proud. The College Park feeder is all about family. We are College Park and darn proud of it. Good afternoon. My name is Caroline Carruthers and I am the student body president of College Park High School. It is an honor and a privilege to go before the Board of Trustees to present our College Park family. Over the years, all of our students quickly learn that education is more than learning the material. It is about the relationships we build, the life lessons we learn, and ways to improve ourselves beyond the classroom. As you see from the video, we practice the saying, it takes a village to raise the future of our community. The College Park family practices this each and every day. Now, with my friends, it is our honor to recognize our administrative family. Principal of College Park High School is Dr. Mark Merle. I am Daryl Prevalor, the headmaster of the Academy of Science and Technology 
is Dr. Susan Kaplan. <laughs> I'm Carson Liu. The principal of Knox Junior High School is Mr. Joe Dahl. Hi, I'm Henry. Hi, I'm Henry Aceves, and the principal of Collins Intermediate is Mrs. Shelley LeBlanc. Hi, I'm Sarian Salto, and the principal of Wilkerson Intermediate is Miss J.J. Daw. Hi, I'm Ann Brown. The principal of David Elementary is Mr. Lee Allen. Hi, my name is Aiden McGill, and the principal of Haley Elementary is Miss Tracy. Gianna. The principal of Lamar Elementary is Miss Mary Jane Kerbo. Standing in for her tonight is our assistant principal, Miss Belcher. I'm now now the principal of Powell Elementary is Miss Lisa Garrison. I'm David Meyer Sheegan. The principal of Wright Elementary is Miss Megan Burnham. Carson Liu, the Vice President of Best Buddies at Knox Junior High. This is my buddy Beck. Best Buddies is the world's leading organization dedicated to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities through friendship, leadership development, integrated employment, and now living. My friendship with Beck has brought us both many opportunities, and I am proud to call her my friend. Hello, I am Garrett Tomaszczyk, the president of Best Buddies at College Park, and this is my buddy Keaton. As of right now, the College Park chapter is ranked nationally, number one in the state for the most fundraising, and number one for the most trained buddy ambassadors. A buddy ambassador is part of the leadership development program where our buddies who are trained travel the city, going to events, giving speeches, and talking about the importance of inclusion. This is not just simply a program that provides friendship. It is a worldwide movement to bring inclusion into our schools and communities. The best part of Best Buddies is that any school can have a program. From elementary school all the way through college, there are even citizen and e-buddy programs. This program is vital to each one of our schools of Connor ISC because this program helps individuals with IDD find a friend, learn how to be a leader, find a job, and how to live on their own. Friendship comes very natural for some, but a lifelong challenge for others. These individuals with IDD are often left to the side or forgotten and never given a chance to fully succeed in life. You now have the chance to make a change for your child, friend, or students. So teachers, administration, and parents, let's give these individuals a fair chance at life. Great job. Thank you very much. Mr. Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Knoll, 
this is a special night for us to show you a little bit about the College Park family. As you know, we cannot do this alone. It takes parents through booster clubs, PTOs, and other organizations to make things work. Tonight, I would like to recognize individuals that make a huge impact on our schools and community. The first Patrons, patrons and Education Award that I would like to present is to Mr. Ted Bell. Mr. Bell, or referred to by the students as Mr. Student Center, <laughs> has given his time and energy to support College Park, Conroe ISD, and all other schools in the area. He is at most events taking pictures and posting them for parents to do download, all free of charge. Also, he has served on the Facilities Planning Committee two times and, all, and is always ready to help in any form or fashion. Mr. Bell is a key person in our community and part of our College Park family. Please help me celebrate Mr. Ted Bell. I have been blessed uh, with 16 years with kids in the College Park feeder zone and I can tell you, you are a, a fixture uh, of uh, just everything about the College Park family. Uh, and I, I don't really uh, understand if you appreciate the impact that you have on our community, uh, not only on the students, but the parents and everybody. And we are just uh, extremely thankful for that. You truly do uh, you make the whole College Park uh, help make them a family. And it's just wonderful to, uh, to be part of that. And as every great man, there's always a great woman <laughs> there as well. And uh, that's always right there with you. And it's just on behalf of the board, we just want to say thank you, present you with this pie for patron influencing education and this, uh, this award. And just say, again, thank you for all of the time and effort that you and, and your family just put into our community and our school. It makes us great. This evening we have a second Pi Award to give, and this one goes to a family that is College Park Feeder Proud. They have supported Lamar, Wilkerson, Knox, and College Park as their kids move through, but it's been much more than that. Mr. and Mrs. Halsey have supported all of our schools with their time, wisdom, volunteering, and much more. Mrs. Halsey is one of the marketing directors from, for some of our Chick-fil-A stores and she is always there to lend a hand and, and help as necessary through fundraising, donations, and so much more. Mr. Halsey takes on leadership positions needed in any organization and is all in. He simply is amazing. So at this time, please help me celebrate Joe and Amy Halsey. in the College Park feeder zone, this couple has uh, actually really impacted my family's life uh, very much so, as well as you've impacted so many others. Uh, you, you've just tirelessly just uh, done so much uh, for the school and for the families and for the kids and for, for everybody involved. We are just so thankful 
for you. You just we're just blessed. That's all I can say. Blessed to have the Halseys, and uh, want to tell you on behalf of the board just how grateful and thankful we are, and present you with your apple streusel pie and your <laughs> award. Thank you so much. And to conclude, the College Park uh, feeder system values academics, but it also recognizes the importance of activities such as athletics and fine arts programs. All of the programs together develop our children to be the best that they can be and set themselves up for, successful, for a successful future. Thank you again for having the College Park family at the board meeting tonight. We hope that you enjoyed what you were able to see about our amazing schools and students. Thank you.
like him for Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might tell. You know, offering for that to go. Yeah. You get my opportunity to exit. Yeah, you might. Well, I don't think we need to tell him. Clear out. Maybe clear out. Clear out. Clear out. So we can hear ourselves. Yeah. Dr. Noel, I thought you were going to get up there at the end of it and Supposed finish to. it I mean, off. They said everybody stand up and sing. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you're part of the program. Oh, the <laughs> they don't need me messing up the program. That's the last <laughs> thing they need. Everything was great. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit of everything. That was awesome. All right. So give everybody an opportunity to kind of get the kids back to home and get in bed and do a little homework and call it quits. All right. Let's go. Uh, item two. All right, no, we're at item I. 2I. All right, 2I, citizens participation. Ms. Goffrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, they have. All right. The next 30 minutes has been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level, a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations more than five must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Goffrey, please call the first person who signed up to address the board. Carrie Freemeyer. Okay, how can I follow that? <laughs> we are family. We are family. Good evening, President Williams and members of the board. Dr. Knoll, my name is Carrie Freemeyer. Christy Sabueta. Use the microphone, we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I come before you tonight not only as a taxpayer for the city of Conroe, but also as the vice president of our local organization of Texas State Teachers Association. I want to share with you our collective support in favor of the Conroe ISD bond. I want it known and I want it documented that TSTA Conroe is for the bond referendum that includes the construction of new schools and classroom additions to accommodate rapidly increasing student population in the north and eastern feeder zones, as well as make improvements and renovations to aged buildings and facilities. The bond would also support funding for CTE facilities, including the robotics program, automotive technology, and engineering design programs, and also provide an agricultural CTE complex, a teacher training facility. And furthermore, it would also fund the continuation of life cycle improvements and safety and security upgrades, which is so strongly needed as we continue to vigorously grow. We are encouraging our members, let me stress that again, we are encouraging our members to make an historical difference in this election by coming to the polls this May, or early voting, and voting for this exemplary, well-designed bond. Thank you for your time and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Enrique Rosero. Good evening, Mr. President, esteemed uh, trustees of the board. Um, Enrique Rosero, I'm a taxpayer in the district. I'm a resident of the Woodlands. I'm a father to a first grader, son to the Woodlands High School feeder. I'm representing myself, my family, my neighbors, and my friends. I do not belong or I'm associated with any political party, political action committee, or group. Um, dear board members, 
bad things happen when good people do not show up. Bad things happen when, in our complacency, voters let special interests influence elections, mostly through political action committees. That's the lesson we can learn from our neighbors in Klein ISD, where an outside group recently defeated a much needed bond. Two PACs have formed to try the same in our district. Ironic, ironically named Children's for Hope for the Future and Concerned Citizens for Montgomery County, they seem to be everything but that. Upon close inspection, it's clear that the same people that influence elections are behind them. One homeschool kid from Willis, who is also an employee of Empower Texans. Two well-known anti-government extremists from Montgomery and Magnolia. One anti-vaccine advocate who lost a board seat election and a candidate to Magnolia ISD. Their efforts seem coordinated with an online forum that spread fake news, misinformation, and alternative facts by the mind behind the resident advocate and the golden yammer. Besides having no association with the district, they have something else in common, distrust of our schools. They advocate for overcrowding schools or classrooms, for disregarding recommendations of law enforcement to keep students safe, and they are carrying empowered Texans agenda to undermine public education. Why a small group of people have such a disproportionate voice? It's because they have been so successful in bullying and scaring everyone with their highly personal and unrelenting attacks. But we see them and we know what they want and that's not good for our kids and our community. I work in the oil and gas industry, so I'm keenly aware of the need for competitive workforce in a global marketplace. Fluency in, fluency in STEM as well as skills are required, and this bond addresses that. When we choose to relocate to the district, school quality and the safety of our kids were high in our consideration. This bond addresses growth, safety, unnecessary upgrades. I gladly pay my school taxes in a district that is both prudent and delivers results. So my family, my friends and neighbors are supporting this bond. Opponents are, in the words of President John F. Kennedy, modern cynic and skeptics which, who see no harm in paying those to whom they entrust their minds of their children a smaller wage than is paid to those whom they entrust the care of their plumbing. It is time we understand what the real costs of not investing in the future are, the hard choices that will have to be made if the phone fails, be it rezoning, crumbling mechanical equipment leading to AC blackouts, maybe even deeper cuts in your budgets. It's hard to describe the pride, the deep commitment and engagement that families feel in our school. We saw a very vivid demonstration of that tonight. Parents, teachers, the business community support the bond. They support investing in the future of this growing district. Those PACs are seeking to rob our children from what they need. It is time to show support for our educators and our children and show up and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Deb Keller. Good evening, Conroe ISD Board of Trustees, and thank you for your service to the community. This is a wonderful school district with many great teachers, administrators, and students, as we've seen tonight. But I need to call your attention to an area where the district is failing students. Six months ago, I brought serious allegations of physical touching and bullying of a student by a staff member to the administration. And due to your policies, I will not make any specific reference to that tonight. Additionally, similar allegations were brought three weeks ago by myself and other parents. Though most CISD policies require investigation within 10 days, the administration has not conducted an unbiased, unbiased investigation, in my opinion. Also during these three weeks, CISD police has promised twice to open an investigation, but to date, 
No movement has been seen on the matter. There, number two, there's a, lot, a lack of clarity and cooperation in, C, in Conroe ISD with regards to the complaint procedure. Parents and students don't feel safe coming forward. When they do, they are met with defensiveness and denial instead of openness and objectivity. In short, many parents give up before a solution is enacted. Those that continue to push are seen as a nuisance. The students are alienated and left at risk. Three, the kid chat line. The line's pre-recorded message threatens consequences for anyone making a false statement. And the way this is worded really dissuades people, even good, credible persons, from leaving their complaint. We simply cannot afford to turn our backs on the students. These are great students. I kindly request, one, that Conroe ISD initiate an independent audit of its handling of this matter in comparison to the Conroe ISD policy. Two, that the board take an interest in expediting the resolution of the current issue. Three, that Conroe ISD establish a task force focused on early detection and fast independent investigation of matters involving physical and mental abuse of children and seek to remove possible barriers such as perhaps Insufficient, insufficient personnel or lack of training hindering such fast action and that the kid chat line be redesigned to better capture complaints. The students are family as we saw this evening. They are a family. They're the future. We simply cannot um, allow our collective heart as was brought up in the, in the meeting in the, in the uh, preamble to be neglected in this way. And as the gentleman said before me, bad things happen when good people do nothing. I implore you to take an interest in this matter. Thank you very much, and I will be happy to provide additional details if requested. Thank you. Thank you. Gail Drummond. You can have your job back. Yeah. Or a job. <laughs> I don't think oh, okay. I want I just, my I just, job I just, back. I I just, but I appreciate, I appreciate that, Mr. Husband. We miss you. That's what I meant. <laughs> I feel like I've come back home. Oh, there you go. Um, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, um, it is a pleasure to be here and to see so many wonderful, familiar faces. I've seen them all evening. Um, as a retired educator, I have to tell you that being a part of Conroe Independent School District for more than 20 years was not only an honor but a privilege. And of course I'm biased toward Conroe ISD. But I'm also a member of the community and a taxpayer. Someone might say, well, you're old, your taxes are frozen, why do you care? Well, I'm here tonight to tell you why. And I actually think the demonstration early in this meeting um, is enough said. Conroe Independent School District has an excellent reputation for superior educational opportunities for students. And along with that, Conroe ISD has a reputation for financial integrity and transparency. Our tax rate is the second lowest in the greater Houston area. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Even with the bond tax increase, we will still have the second lowest tax rate. Our school district continues to grow. During the last decade, we added 15,000 students and in the next five years, they're expected to add 7,000 plus. This growth helps our economy in the community and requires us to make sure that students have classrooms that are equipped and not overcrowded, ensuring the best learning environments. Some of the items in the bond are very important to me, actually all of them are, but I'm going to speak to a few. Conroe High School is the flagship high school in Conroe Independent School District. The reconfiguration is so exciting to me for the students as well as the community. I love the safety of moving the front entrance away from State Highway 105. I don't think I need to tell you why. 
anyone who's driven on 105 in the last 15 minutes or any time during daylight hours could understand that. I'm also excited that the campus will be connected throughout rather than having buildings in isolation. The improvements made over the past years have been amazing, but the students and staff deserve the improvements that are going to be made available through this bond. Caney Creek High School with projected growth will be a 6A high school in the future and probably in the next few years. The improvements to that campus will ensure that they are ready for that growth when it happens. We can't wait until it happens and then try to do something. Another aspect of the bond is the addition of career and technical education facilities throughout our high schools. People who know me know that that is a very great passion of mine. Um, I had such wonderful opportunities here to be a part of the growth of career and technical education and to see all of the exciting things that are happening. Our students will have opportunities through CTE courses to earn certifications that allow them to go to work immediately following graduation or to continue on to advance their coursework at the college level. Ask anyone in construction, plumbing, HVAC, electrical contracting, they need workers who have the skills who can go to work right now. How blessed are we to have these opportunities for our students? And with this bond, we have students at Grand Oaks, Oak Ridge, the Woodlands, and College Park High Schools who will no longer have to travel to Conroe to take those CTE courses. And then more seats will open at Conroe High for students attending Conroe High School and Caney Creek High School. That means more seats for more kids who get more certifications and are able to enter the workforce. I appreciate so much all of your efforts and I do commend the Bond Planning Committee for their hard work. Their task was not easy, nor are the tasks of all the administrators in this district. I am voting yes for this bond. All right, we're going to move, a gentlemen, if it's all the same to you, we're going to move item nine up on the agenda. So naming the school principals, Dr. No. Well, thank you, Mr. Williams, and that's certainly, um, it's an honor tonight to name new principals, but I'd like to start by celebrating uh, our principals that are retiring. Um, we are blessed to have great leaders in Conroe ISD, and, and I know that we don't, I'm not sure that Mr. Johnson is here tonight, but um, I would just like to take an opportunity to celebrate both Mr. Johnson and uh, Ms. Judy Mills, who is here tonight. Um, they are retiring, and uh, between them, they have 87 years <laughs> of experience and dedication to students. So most of those are Tommy's though. They, they're all <laughs> Judy can't have more than about five or ten just looking at her. There's no way. But um, but thank you, Judy, for, for your dedication and uh, so impressed. And with that, I would say um, we'll be introducing two more people tonight that get to follow a legend. I know how that feels, so uh, <laughs> it's pretty awesome, I will tell you. Uh, uh, our first uh, principal tonight is at Bush Elementary, um, and I'm proud to recommend Dr. Jared Lambert to become the principal of Bush Elementary. Uh, Mr. Lambert and Dr. Lambert has been uh, a vital member of the Connor ISD family. He spent the last few years at Haley Elementary as an assistant principal. Previous to that, uh, he worked in our district technology department, and he is um, known district-wide as being not only a man that has great experience and knowledge, but a, a man of great class and character, and I know that he will serve the Bush community well. At this time, I would recommend his approval. Ms. Go ahead, Don. Mr. President, I would move the board name Dr. Lambert as the new principal of Bush Elementary. Second. Gentlemen, I have a first, I have a second. Discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Passes unanimously. <laughs>
Thank you. Um, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, thank you for the trust you have placed in me. Uh, it is an honor to be selected to serve through the principalship at Bush Elementary. My journey to the principalship at Bush has been guided by the relationships I've forged, and there are too many relationships to acknowledge individually. There are too many people in this room tonight um, to acknowledge the support and guidance that they provided over the years. <clears throat> I do, however, have to take a moment to thank Tracy Horn and my colleagues at Haley. I've spent the most recent stage of my career learning from and with some amazing teachers and students, and you saw some of those students tonight. Above all, Ms. Horn has challenged me to explore new ideas and find ways to engage both students and teachers in meaningful learning. Bush Elementary is getting a better me because of the time I've spent at Haley. To my future colleagues at Bush Elementary, I'm excited by the opportunity to continue my learning journey with you. As I contemplate assuming the principalship held by Judy Mills, I know living up to the legacy is not going to be easy. <laughs> um, I look forward to working with the Bush Elementary community to build on the Bobcat tradition of excellence. But I'd be remiss if I stepped away from the podium without acknowledging the people in this room who have most fundamentally shaped the person who stands before you. My wife, Rachel. She still chokes me up. Um, <laughs> she should. <laughs> Rachel is a high school administrator, um, and her example reminds me every day about the transformative power of meaningful relationships. My son Charles is here. <laughs> Charles shows me what it means to engage <clears throat> with your whole passion, with your whole heart. My sister Tanya is also here, and she and her family, she and her family constantly share the power of good humor. <laughs> Trust me on that one. <laughs> but finally, I have to acknowledge my parents, and it'll take me a second. Cindy Lambert was my first teacher, and she guided me through my first teaching job. And Tom Lambert has been and remains my most powerful role model. He embodies all that is good with public service. And he demonstrates every day the tr that true leadership rests on the quality of our relationships. Thank you very much. Appreciate my wife too. Good job. Yeah. Uh, do you Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> but yeah, hard yard, yeah. Five minute reset. <laughs> I gotta stop by and pick up flowers and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> 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 the allergies. Uh, Dr. Null, uh, item nine, uh, where are we? Nine B. 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 Name and sure. of uh, Principal Oak Ridge High School. You know, Oak Ridge High School is a, has a very proud tradition, and we've, we've spoken numerous times over the last few years about the wonderful job they've done there managing a, a very large campus prior to Grand Oaks opening. And Mr. Johnson and the full team there has, has done a wonderful job. Also, an integral part of that has been the work that's been done at the ninth grade campus. Um, as we've seen Oak Ridge uh, scores increase, we, we do note that three of the five tested subjects in high schools are taken in ninth grade. So the ninth grade plays a key role uh, in the performance side of high schools. Um, for the last three years, we've had a principal at the ninth grade campus that has come in um, and really just uh, bought in to the Oak Ridge way. Uh, he's all in um, and, and being a war eagle. Um, and just as we saw with Dr. Lambert, we uh, have a man of high class character uh, and intellect that um, is ready and poised to lead that community 
uh, as the high school principal. So at this time, in Dr. A.J. Levecki, principal of Oak Ridge High School. Mr. President, I would move that we uh, approve Dr. A.J. Levecki as the next principal at Oak Ridge High School. I second the motion. All right, gentlemen, we have a first, we have a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Passes. Unanimous. <laughs> and College Park. Okay. Um, President Williams, Board of Trustees, Dr. Knoll, thank you for the trust in me to serve as the next principal at Oak Ridge High School. I know I have big shoes to fill, um, and I welcome the challenge of following Tommy Johnson as the leader of Oak Ridge High School. I want to thank Mr. Johnson and his staff for their belief in me for the last three years as I have served as the principal of Oak Ridge Ninth Grade Campus. The Oak Ridge family welcomed me as one of their own and nurtured me into being a better leader. I recognize and appreciate your faith in me, and I'm ready to help guide Oak Ridge in our continued pursuit to be the best high school in Texas. I also want to thank the colleagues and educators I've worked with over the years who've helped me prepare for my next role, including my first principal, Dr. Mark Morrow. However, tonight would not be possible without the enduring love and support of my wife, Allison. She stood by me through thick and thin as encouraged me to be a better husband, father, and man. Quick story about my wife. She used to teach at Irons Junior High School, which is a feeder into the Oak Ridge High School, uh, ninth grade campus and senior campus. When her eighth graders would come to the ninth grade campus as ninth grade students, and they'd see my last name, they'd ask me if I knew who Mrs. Lebecki was. <laughs> it's not easy being married to a celebrity. <laughs> I would often ask students if she was a good teacher, and they would always tell me she was one of the best teachers they ever had. My reply would normally be, the reason I became a principal is I couldn't compete with her as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and after they got to know me, they understood why. <laughs> but part of being a good leader is knowing where your strengths lie, and I figured that out rather quickly. I also want to thank my mother-in-law, Jackie, who's here tonight, been supportive throughout my career. Uh, my son, Ethan, who many of you have heard uh, tonight, um, and my daughter, Elena, uh, who both go to school in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone next year. I look forward to seeing them grow and soar as future War Eagles. Thank you again for this opportunity. I do understand how truly blessed I am. Outstanding job. All right, gentlemen, I give everyone an opportunity to break camp here. Can we, can we get one short one break? We're going to refer you here? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick five minutes if you guys don't mind. All right. So we'll, I don't know if it's an official adjournment. We'll take five minutes and we'll come back in. Recess? Yeah. Recess? All right. So everyone, let's move on. All right, um, consent agenda. I had no request to move anything. Did anyone? Anything? All right, so uh, consent agenda. Can I get a motion? I move that we approve the consent oh, agenda. Ray. I second it. Ray, we got a motion and a second on the consent agenda. Did you have any objections? Okay. Um, no discussion. All in favor? All right, thank you. All right, that was item four. Um, we're on item four curriculum and instruction. Dr. No. All right, this time we got the superintendent, Dr. Chris Hines. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Knoll. Uh, the Texas Education Agency requires that the Board of Trustees and the superintendent annually certify to the state that all of our students have access to instructional materials that cover all of the Texas essential knowledge and skills, or the TEKS, in each of the required subjects. And this certification must be done prior to submitting our textbook orders using the online requisition system. <laughs> And just to kind of recall, last month we approved the uh, language arts adoption, um, which is from the State Board of Educator Education uh, list of approved um, materials. 
And so it's that time that we're asking your permission tonight to, uh, to certify that we have what we need to cover the teaks. Um, we have to order each spring not just the new books that we will need, but also we have to replace sometimes damaged or older books or, or renew subscriptions um, and replace consumables in the lower grades. Uh, we also grow, so we, we end up adding additional books. We also, in this certification, besides certifying that we have all the materials to teach the TEKS, we're also certifying that we're spending our funds according to the allotment um, conditions, which can only be allowed under um, uh, to use for purchase of technology or instructional materials or personnel to support the instructional materials and instructional technology. Uh, and so we get a biennium allotment, and we're asking tonight for your approval. You have a motion? I move we approve as presented. I second the motion. Motion, second, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Uh, let's go with uh, item 5A, <coughs> consider approval of uh, Western, Western Interactive Service Corporation for purchase, Dr. Null. All right, Ms. Blakelock. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. I am here tonight to present West Interactive Communication Services uh, for your consideration. So West Corporation is a global provider of communication and network infrastructure services. They're also the provider of School Messenger. Those of you who've been around a long time may remember that we used to use School Messenger maybe six or seven years ago. So um, School Messenger is a mass communication system that allows for the quick sharing of emer emergency messaging, lunch balances, regular school communications, the fun school closing notices that go out, and, and all of those types of regular communications that are necessary in a school district. School Messenger offers a robust infrastructure that allows for immediate sending of, say, 70,000 messages all at once without any delays. And they also offer some features such as um, enhanced text characters. Any of you have tried to tweet in 300 characters? Well, it's hard to send a text telling someone powers out in 300 characters. <laughs> and so it, this offers um, a broader uh, range of abilities with that. So over the past several months, Katie Morton, who is our communication specialist, who's a little under the weather tonight, otherwise she would be here, she has pulled together um, members of the technology department, Terry Ross and Terry McClary, along with myself and Dr. Hines, and we have evaluated the different um, messaging and mass communication platforms and um, based on everybody's evaluation, we come to you tonight to request your approval of West Communication, also known as School Messenger. Um, we request your approval of them as a vendor and then also request your approval to allow uh, the superintendent to negotiate a contract with them not to exceed $71,000. All right, gentlemen, I have a motion. Move to approve as presented. Second. Uh, discussions, first we have a third, uh, motion and a second. Do we have a discussion? This is this discussion? Go ahead. Excuse me, discussion. discussion. Could, could you tell us a little bit more about what is it that you like this system versus the others that you looked at? So, largely over as our district has grown, we've realized that we need a lot more stability, and so the infrastructure of West supports um, a lot of the phone-in programs and things that we see on TV, and so there's reliability. Whereas other platforms might not have those same relationships with the telecommunication systems, and so. For example, during Hurricane Harvey, when we would send out 73,000 messages at one time, they wouldn't all go out at once because maybe the infrastructure couldn't support it, and so it would batch them. And so 10,000 would go out here, 10,000 would go out there over the course of an hour, maybe. And that's a critical time that's, loss yeah. and critical gap <clears throat> during things like that. Um, it's also, again, with the text messaging. So. Sending texts, because a lot of times we identify the school in the text, and so it'll say, message from Glenlock Elementary, and then we'll say, you know, power's currently out at the school, then we need to tell parents that the students are safe, and then we try to give them an ETA. And so fitting all of that in 300 characters is often challenging. And so with School Messenger, they actually have the relationships with the um, cell phone providers, and so they can extend the text characters without passing along that additional fee to us. Okay. So those are two of the main considerations. Also customer support and uh, tech support. Right. And how many, how many vendors did you guys look at? And we actually um, reviewed four or five. 
Okay. And because of the category this was in, because it was on a buy board, we didn't have to put out for a specific bid. But we were able to, um, we of course reviewed all of Blackboard's options again and reviewed both. They have two options. They have Blackboard Connect that we use, and then they have another Blackboard Communicate, I think is the other one. Mm -hmm. So we reviewed both of those. We reviewed School Messenger, and then there were several others, but none of them had the robust infrastructure because those were the main things that we really needed to have addressed for our community and the communication needs. And so as far as training goes to use this new platform, mm -hmm. how many people will that affect, and how long will it take to get if, if this gets approved tonight, how long before it takes effect and, and be fully functional? So um, this particular company, actually, we are not recommending this, but they transitioned all of HISD in two weeks. <laughs> but okay. what we would do, which would be much less direct, disruptive for our users, is we would start um, working on the uploads because we have to get the codes right and the... Um, programs so that all the names and addresses and Is that numbers. you doing it or is that part of the service? So it pulls from our data system and it's updated regularly, but it's just making sure that what we're sending them is talking. The but they provide a tremendous amount of customer support in that area. Okay. And so we would like to start doing trainings um, the start of summer at the end of the school year. But the great thing about this is that we can actually start utilizing School Messenger now while we're still under contract with Blackboard, so we can have both services, so that campuses can still utilize Blackboard to communicate throughout the summer, and we can train people and bring them on and start using School Messenger, and then September 1st, we would switch over all the way to School Messenger. So it's okay. a really nice transition time. Right Sir, Sir what, um, not that we're not a leader, but there are other districts that are yes. bigger than ours. You mentioned one just now. Mm -hmm. uh, but since we're anticipating growth, mm -hmm you know, from now on for that matter, how does this system, I mean, Houston's the biggest, so I, I assume that answer is really my question. I mean, do, are the other districts that are larger in, than us in our peer group using this system? The School Messenger is used um, across the nation. And again, the thing that's different now with School Messenger as opposed to when we used them before is the infrastructure. They were bought by West Corporation shortly after we moved to Blackboard. And so just the more robust server systems, the redundancies that they have across the country, all of those things um, allow it to be a better fit for our growing district. And we asked them about their usage statistics during Hurricane Harvey, and, because you know that's the benchmark for everything. We're all here, we're all needing to cancel school and communicate critical messages. And during that time, they only utilized 1% of their capacity to send messages. Oh, wow. So we feel pretty good about that. Yeah. It says there's a purchase of the school messenger communication system. Is that yes. hardware software? Is that just we interface with them? Is it like Blackboard? It is. So it's, you know, an online kind of interface. There are components that we would have the ability to, um, if it works out with our computer images, <clears throat> where we could have pop-ups come up mm -hmm. on our computers that would say, you know, the Internet's down, which would be great service for us. Uh, we haven't tested that yet, so I can't say, you know, 100% that that will work. But, yes, it's very the same type thing. You go in, you can log in. There are apps that you can download and communicate and send messages very much like Blackboard Connect. And, and the price is comparable to what we're currently using? Yes. So currently we pay uh, 68900 for Blackboard. And this first year there's a $1,200 first-time fee, yeah. setup fee. And so that is $1,200. But then every other year um, the base price will just be 69750 so about $1,000 more, we're getting more stability, more texting characters, oh, yeah. and oh, um, something that can grow with our district. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much. Motion second, we had discussion. Yeah. All in favor? Motion passes, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, item 5B, receive capital improvement updates. Dr. No. All right, Mr. Foster. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. No. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to bring forward you some information, which is an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. I'll start you with Suchum Elementary. 
Touch Elementary is scheduled to open in August of this coming August, so I mean August 19. So it'll be ready for school when it starts, when kids come back from their summer break. So you can see from the picture overhead that the paving on the site is, is, is about 99% done. So we're waiting on the connection to the county road as they bring us a firehouse lane on the right-hand side of your picture. The roof of the building, which is the big, big benchmark we've been shooting for, is to get that building into a dry situation. So that building is 100% dry at this point uh, from the rooftop. So the masonry process is, is underway around that building uh, in earnest. And like I've, I've told you, and then they continue to run about twice the number of uh, manpower that we would expect on a job this size to try to help make up for the uh, storms we experienced in the first quarter of the year. As you can see, there's material everywhere. So as that building begins to take its uh, shape and personality, but that work is uh, rapidly coming around. The masonry, the, the finished masonry is coming around the, the gym, the high wall sides, making its way to the front door. So you'll see that close up over the next month or so. And on the inside, you're starting to see with the dry conditions, some of the best finishes coming in. So you're looking at a shot of the commons area where the kids are going to eat, uh, eat their lunch and they'll attend their assemblies and do all the things that elementary students do in their, in, inside their schools. So that building is currently on schedule, it's scheduled to open this summer in August of 2019. Moving over to Austin Elementary School where we're doing a building addition so we can uh, uh, take some of the original portions of that campus out of service if they, those buildings have reached the end of their useful life. So you can see from this overhead picture, the, uh, you can see the full orientation of uh, the new Austin Elementary. So the gray roof area that you see there is what will remain at the end of the summer when the kids start for school in August. The project is scheduled to be finished in August, so it's occupied now and it will continue to be occupied throughout the year. And then this summer we'll start to work on the uh, demolition of the original portions of that building. Much like Suchma, the roof is the big benchmark we've been working on, so you see the gray areas bring that building into a dry condition as well. So on the inside, you're starting to see those common elements come together, just like we uh, showed you at Suchma just a few minutes ago. So the colors, the personality, the things of that nature are coming in. The front door of Austin is, is starting to come together. So as the masonry is closing in on the front of that, what well, will be the front door of that campus, which is actually the furthest away from Highway 105 as we can get it on that site. Awesome. And that is moving along very well. As so I want to point out to you too, as we demo the old building, we're going to preserve all the mature trees on that site. I mean, so I know there was some discussion over the weekend about some, some, uh, some issues about them, but all the mature trees that you see pictured and as you drive around that campus will remain. They're not in the demolition area of the building, and we're going to take some extra care at this point to make sure that the bulldozers and other, other demolition equipment don't accidentally run into them. But our plan has been and always will be to preserve mature trees whenever possible. Thank you for doing that. And Mr. F I'm sorry, Mr. Foster, if you go back, the, what does that be, the west side of the the building that's being torn down weren't we yes, extending that that lane out a little wider to the, uh, well the drive lane uh i'm going to go back to the i'm other sorry yeah because i was thinking about the very right. first picture yeah so which would be the top side of this building which is the uh, top side of this picture which is the western end so the the dark kind of the the dingy colored roof area the roof section of the buildings that are being demolished right so that lane does extend wider because so right once now, the building's removed that lane becomes wider is what you're saying yes I okay mean, i understand fact, the, the whole western end of the campus changes dramatically right uh, that's what of, i thought uh, okay i'm sorry yeah, thank you lots of still lots of additional driveway and, and parking in uh, the playground area so you should be able to get around the entire school it is uh from a fire perspective there is a way to get a fire truck all the right. way around but right. pedestrian or, or that, typical traffic won't absolutely absolutely no no i understood it And moving forward to Stockton Junior High School. Now, Stockton is scheduled to open in August of 2020, uh, and it's a project that is on schedule right where we'd anticipate it being at this point. Uh, we're pushing forward on the roof. I mean, that's the next benchmark for that building to bring it into a dry condition as well. As you can see, the, the structure is 100%. The roof deck is about uh, probably close to 90%. And the roof concrete, which is the base level of our roof system, is about 20% done at this point. So it's moving, moving just as we'd expect it to uh, at this point. I'd like to point now to the athletic field because that's the, the kind of our, our critical path. We've got to have those grass areas established and growing well before we can use them when school opens in August 2020. So you can see the very well defined and stabilized track area for the football field and the, the kind of the dark brown areas in the in the picture at the top of the picture and in the middle of the track will be the uh, natural grass uh, fields for the junior high facilities. And on the inside, so that building is moving around the masonry walls, the interior walls, the building systems, the fireproofing systems, the mechanical systems that you saw last week, all that stuff is moving forward very rapidly and very, uh, and just as we expected to for a building of that size and magnitude. 
like I said, is scheduled to open in August of 2020. Now, at Conroe High School, we're doing a building, we just opened a building addition uh, to start the winter, the spring semester, which allowed us to work on the inside of the main campus. So uh, you've seen a lot of clear concrete areas over the last couple of months, and now you're seeing all those areas come back together. So the big, the big milestone we hit uh, this week, the end of last week rather, was the delivery of the uh, new concrete block, which makes the new walls for the new hallways, uh, door frames and the new classrooms that are being uh, realigned and put together on the second floor currently. So our plan is to work through the summer to open the second floor when school returns uh, in the, for the uh, fall semester. And then when school is out at the end of the semester, we're gonna start on the first floor to do the same process on the first floor of the main building. The first floor will last through the end of December of 2019, which is the schedule, current schedule uh, and is on schedule for that project at this time. Now our life cycle project was that project where we help maintain our campuses by replacing whole building systems that reach the end of their useful life. <coughs> this is a picture at Hauser Elementary, which has the uh, white roof cap sheet being installed right now. That roof project is about 90 percent done. Uh, so the white uh, uh, the white cap sheet actually helps us with our uh, energy bills over the and helps uh, helps us keep those good relationships with Entergy and, and uh, Centerpoint that we heard about earlier today. And that process has also started in earnest at Rice Elementary. So we're removing the just the original roof of the Rice uh, building and then installing the new roof now. So that project is about 30 percent complete at this point. Uh, but it's proceeding uh, on schedule as we had planned at this point. I showed you pictures last month of Giesinger in progress. So the, the finished metal is going back on Giesinger's roof and they should wrap up those details or at least get substantially further along with those details over the long weekend that's coming. Uh, so they're going to take good use of the work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday when our, uh, our children are not in, in class those Monday, Friday and Monday so that we can make some progress on that and show you some finished pictures of that building next month. And that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Well Appreciate that. All right. Item 6A, consider award RFQ 19-02. That's 9 09, Dr. No. Mr. Darren Rice. Mr. Rice. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noel. Uh, tonight, we are recommending the Board of Trustees award RFQ 19-02-09, Critical Needs and Suchma K6 Musical Instruments, Equipment and Supplies to the 13 recommended vendors for an annual estimated expenditure of $455,000. Request for quotes pertaining to the purchase of new musical instruments, equipment, and supplies for the district was emailed to 27 vendors through the electronic e system, 17 submitted bid responses. Unit pricing was requested for new instruments, equipment, and supplies through June 30th of 2019. Proposals were evaluated by the CISD Fine Arts Department and reviewed by the Purchasing Department. Funds for the purchase of new instruments are provided in the General Fund and Capital Projects Fund. Best value offers are recommended for board award. I recommend your approval. General, move we approve as presented. Second. I have a motion, second, discussion? I have a question. Just make sure that we, we understand exactly. It's one RFQ, but there are actually two different parts of this project. One is the opening needs for Sushma, and the other part is critical needs district-wide any campus. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, motion I, I, I do a quick question. It, it, you mentioned it's a below for an annual estimated expenditure of 455? Yes. Am I reading that so every year it's going to be 455? Annual, or is that just this one time? Just this one time. This is this okay. Is, this I, is, that's what I thought. But just next year we'll come back with another another bitter quote for these instruments. All right, all in favor. All right, let's go to item six uh, B. Consider approval of twenty nineteen twenty twenty employee group health insurance program. No? Yes, tonight I'm honored to represent the Employee Benefits Committee in recommending the Board of Trustees approve the employee medical coverage rates and plan design for the self-funded health insurance program. You know, I would like to thank the Employee Benefits Committee for the hard work that they've done this year in two phases. First, as they uh, presented United Healthcare as our third party administrator, and now as they recommend the rates and plan design for our plan. Uh, I would also like to recognize uh, the HR benefits team. And I think here this evening we have Dr. Sharples. Raise your hand. 
<laughs> <laughs> Paula Green. And Tiffany Matt, Matt Field wasn't here at the uh, board workshop, and I'd like to recognize her. There's, there she is. And I thought, right. Was Jill here earlier? I thought I saw her. Okay. And, uh, you know, without them, they've done just such a great job and always looking out for the district's employees. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. The district self-funded group health insurance program is designed to provide the district employees a quality health plan at a reasonable cost. With the addition of United Healthcare as the district's third party administrator, we will continue to manage our program in innovative ways to offset the rise of medical and prescription drug inflation. There are slight benefit plan design changes to accommodate the addition of the Kelsey ACO or charter network. Uh, this new benefit plan will be offered at substantially lower premiums compared to last year with uh, savings of $400, $480 per year for employees choosing employee-only coverage. The district's tiered model benefit plan is called the Nets Nexus Network, and that includes the Memorial Herman ACO, as we currently do, and that is Tier 1, and the United Choice Open Access Network for Tier 2. This plan will see no premium increases. The proposed plan design changes and, recommend and recommended employee premiums are shown on the attached exhibits or on the board, as you can see. CISD believes all of its plans will continue to be offered at competitive rates and benefit structure. If the plan changes are approved, the total projected health plan cost will be $48.9 million, which is no increase over the previous year, with the district funding 59% of the health plan cost and employee premiums funding the remaining 41%. At this time, I recommend your approval. I move that we approve as presented. I have second. a motion. Second. I have a second. Discussion? All in favor? Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. I just like to say you guys did you do what goes without saying we discussed in our workshop you guys did a phenomenal job and oftentimes um, sometimes teachers take for granted the the quality of plan versus other school districts this is definitely a recruiting tool for us getting new teachers in keeping new teachers and making it to where it's affordable for everyone to have insurance so I really appreciate that thank you sir well, thank you Dr. And along that same note just you know we all know health insurance always goes up to be able to, to tell the uh, the teachers and administrators at CISD that there is no premium increase on some of these plans that's got to feel good yep, yeah. close, man. that's got to be that's got to feel good yes. all right uh, item 6c receive financial reports yeah these are the financial statements for the month of March for the district uh, the first statement we'll look at is our balance sheet, and each month we always like to look at our cash and investments to make sure that our, our money's in there working for us. Uh, we'll concentrate on the general fund. You can see we have cash on hand of $500, uh, deposits in the bank of $239,000. We have investments with the state pools of $166 million. We have investments in Wood Forest National Bank at $121.2 million. Our longer-term investments are with TCG Investment Advisors at $51.1 million for total cash and investments of $338.9 million. Just real quickly, property taxes, collection percentage remains strong. I'll stand there. Income statement uh, includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. And as we're all aware, in our, in our detailed revenues, property taxes is the largest uh, revenue generator in our general fund and debt service. <laughs> Uh, food sales uh, in child nutrition and its premium contributions in our self-funded insurance plan. Uh, self-funded insurance plan this year, uh, total revenues are 20, 29 million dollars. Our total expenses currently 27.5 million dollars for revenues over expenses expenditures currently of 1.5 million dollars. As we know, the months coming up, summer months are big, heavy months, so we're we're hoping that 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 balance stays throughout the year. Uh, participation in our wellness centers continues strong. We're averaging 556 uh, visits per month, and we're very proud of that. Our investments for the month, uh, par, par value of our total portfolio was $512 million. Uh, the pools are yielding 2.62%. Uh, Wood Forest National Bank just a little bit above that at 2.66%. Uh, a longer term investment uh, investments with TCG investment advisors 2.03 percent they're starting to work and get those get those uh, making some ground up uh, leaving us with a combined portfolio that has a, a wham of 34 days and it's yielding 2.57 uh, percent and our benchmark which is the 90-day T bill is currently at 2.35 percent thank you mr. rice appreciate that all of our work you and your staff always appreciate it makes it easy for us 
All right, um, Dr. No. Thank you, President Williams. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on April 16th, 2019. A quorum of the board is present, including Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, uh, Mr. Sanders, and Mr. Inman. The board will hear the complaint appeal of parent Patrice Ward in accordance with local board policy FNG. This hearing is being recorded. Ms. Ward's complaint is against Conroe ISD and the staff of the Woodlands High School. Because Mrs. Ward's complaint is against district employees and because personally identifiable information about a public school student could be revealed, the hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and 551.0821. The board will also go into executive session under Texas Government Code Section 551.071 for consultation with the board's attorney. The meeting is now adjourned into executive session under Texas Government Code Sections 551.071, 551.074, and 551.0821. Everyone not associated with this hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 8.07. The board has reconvened in open session. The time is now 8.35. The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decisions of the level one and level two hearing officers. The board can overturn the hearing officer's decision or the board can grant any relief they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion? I move that the board uphold the decisions of the hearing officers and deny all relief that has not been previously granted. Second. See you next month. I have a second. All in favor? Thank you. At this time, the board has um, denied the relief and upheld the um, decisions of level one and level two hearing officers. We will send written notice to Mrs. Ward confirming the action taken by the board, and that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have the ability to move up? I guess it doesn't really matter, but can we move any of these up? Because there's nobody here for these. We're going to skip those tonight? Yeah. Who is Kevin? Which one? Do you want? This guy's. I don't want to give anything. No, the way up one. Oh, the web. Okay, he resigned. Yeah. Okay, so that's gone. And then this guy here. What number? Right. So we don't even have to meet. So much. We can just do another here. Oh, okay. Okay. You want to show us something? Is this guy here? Ellie. Yeah, Josh. Jerry. Yeah, he's here. Uh, I know, I didn't know he was here. Yeah, he's here. Oh, yeah. mm. He was here earlier. Watch that. Thank you for your patience, gentlemen. It's been a long night. All right. This meeting of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees is convened on April 16th, 2019. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Mr. Moore, Mr. Husbands, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams, Mr. Hubert, Mr. Sanders, and Mr. Inman. The board will hear the complaint appeal of Mr. Joshua Jaros in accordance with local board policy FNG. This hearing is being recorded. Mr. Jaros' complaint is against Conroe ISD and two staff members from Burnham Woods Elementary. Because Mr. Jarrell's complaint is against district employees, the hearing will be held in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074. The board will also go into executive session under Texas Government Code Section 551.071 for consultation with the board's attorney. The, be the meeting is now adjourned to executive session under Texas Government Code Sections 551.074 and 551.071. Everyone not associated with the hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while executive session. The time, time is now 8.38. In open session, the time is now 9.34. The board will now make its decision. The board can uphold the decisions of the level one and level two hearing officers. The board can overturn the hearing officers' decisions or the board can grant any relief they feel is appropriate. Is there a motion? I move that the board uphold the decisions of the hearing officers and deny all relief that has not previously been granted. Is there a second? I second the motion. All those in favor, please raise your hands. And none opposed. Thank you. This time the board has unanimously upheld the decision of the level one and level two hearing officers. 
Mr. Jarrus, the district will send you a written confirmation of the board's decision. Um, this concludes our hearing. Do we need to go back in session? Uh, and then back out again. And then back out. We are in open session now, correct? Yes. So you just need a motion to make a motion to adjourn. No, we have no, 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 no. one more. I still make a motion. Yes. <laughs> I'll try it again. Yes. 10 C. All right. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. I'll put up, put up everything. 10 C. Um, legal. Terminate the probationary, probationary employment contract of Richard Chimalera uh, for good cause. This is glad to know. Uh, we, we can certainly go back into executive session to go, you know, you all accepted the superintendent's proposal last month to recommend termination of Mr. G. Mueller's contract before the end of its term. He had, we gave him notice. He had an opportunity to request a hearing. He did not request a hearing. The requisite number of days have passed. And so um, now, and I have the motion. words. If, if you want to go ahead and terminate. Sanders. Mr. President, I move that the board immediately terminate the probationary contract for Richard Jim Alera for good cause. I second the motion. Got a motion, second, gentlemen, discussion. All in favor? All right. Motion passes. All right. That's it. The, the final item uh, has been uh, removed. removed. The employee resigned his position, so exactly. the item is no longer. Gentlemen, come on. Make a motion to adjourn. All right, I got a second. I beat you. <laughs>